We have uh, Sally, who's been waiting from Melbourne, Australia, one of my favorite places, for almost the entire show. How are you, Sally? I'm great. G'day, mate. How are you? I'm doing well. I love the Australian. I'm looking mate. forward to coming back. I can't believe I've got... Oh, you can come and stay at my beach house anytime you want, Matt. Sweet. Uh, it'd take me at least yeah. a week, but we can work it out. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you to you and Seth. I listen to the th Thinking Atheists all the time. Thank you. On podcast, on my car. Um, it was because of both of you that I'm no longer a theist. Um, I just have one remaining issue. I'm not too sure how to deal with or where to place. All right, let's see if we can help. Um, okay. Um, there's been times in my life where I've had gut feelings or seen things or that have come true. Now, if there's no afterlife, where do I place these issues and how do I deal with them logically? You know, is it a figment of my imagination? Is there a part of my brain that um, produces these things? Um, you know, do you know what I mean? So where do I put these things? Do you have kind of an example? I mean, just like one to work with? Okay. Because yeah, the definitely. first thing I'll always say is there are lots of things that happen in our life for which yep. if we were to be honest and somebody says, what was that or, or why did that happen? The only answer we have is, I don't know. But there, there are things, that, and, and you can tell me if I'm getting close to the sorts of things that you experience. Um, um, most people have had the experience where they're thinking about someone and the phone rings and it's that person. Uh, yes. There's no reason to think that there's anything supernatural going on. Uh, it, it could be as simple as, you know, I've, I've heard cases where two people heard the same song on the radio that made them think about the other person, and there's that connection. Or if you hear from, like, I, I might speak to my mom, uh, like, I know if I go a couple of months without talking to my mom, she's going to call. And so it may be that I've trained myself to feel guilty that just around the time I'm feeling guilty and she's going to call, that's when she would call. Um, there are other things where we, we seem to get impressions about things that are going to happen, and then they happen. Yeah. Not, not just that. But that's because we are intuition machines. We train our brain to make predictions about the future. Everything, uh, constantly, nonstop, we are making predictions about the future. Even as I'm talking, mm -hmm. I am... Uh, my brain is doing things I'm not even aware of, which is trying to figure out what I should say next, uh, paying attention to what's going on, trying to figure out whether or not the ceiling's likely to fall in on me. You know, did I hear a creaking? It's processing all kinds of information. It's because we focus in this area. We live our lives by inference and induction. Today is pretty much the same as yesterday. And because of that, I can make predictions about what's going to happen today. I know that if I stepped on the scale yesterday and I weighed 205, that the odds that I'm going to step on it tomorrow and weigh 973 are vanishingly small. I also know that I'm not gonna step on there and weigh four pounds, unless you know the scale's broken. But I know that uh, my day tends to proceed in a similar fashion, even if everything seems different. Even if I go to bed at a different time, wake up at a different time, uh, traffic patterns. There are patterns in the world, we see them and recognize them, we're so good at it that we've become bad at recognizing the process that lets us recognize those patterns. I don't know if that gets I don't know what that had to do I don't, with the afterlife, but I don't know if it, it touches on what you were talking about. I guess it does help a lot. I mean, I'll give you two of the main examples that I kind of struggle with. I think I can explain one. Um, I had a boyfriend also at my sister's house. I just had this horrible feeling in my stomach that he was cheating on me, went home and found him in bed with my sister's friend. My friend's sister, sorry. Um, but I think, well, he did cheat on me before, so this gut feeling probably, you know, may have been because of past history. Um, and another example, I guess, would be um, sitting there talking to a friend and getting an image of an old man sitting next to her in my mind and him telling me things to tell her. Um, okay, the second so, one, the second one is in a completely different category. The first yeah, one, the so first one I would view as completely thought. trivial. You're in a relationship with yep. someone. You know yep. when things aren't going right in the relationship, even if you're not consciously processing it all the time. You know, hey, mm -hmm. we're, we're touching each other less, we're talking to each other less, or I've recognized this sort of pattern of behavior before. So that, that is utterly mundane. But the second one, yep. you said you're, you're sitting there with someone and you see an image and it gives you information to give to that person. That, uh, can, yes, that, can you describe that? I mean, are you hearing things audibly? Um, well, it's like a brief image of a, uh, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain it quickly and as best as I can. 
Um, I'm sitting there, sitting there with my friend. And next minute, I see this older man saying, "Next, it was just a flash image in my mind. Like it wasn't like it was there, but the it, it's very difficult to explain. But I could describe him standing there. Um, sure. And the the information he's giving me is in my own voice, in my own head. Um, and it was correct. So, you know, I didn't know about her, anything about her grandfather. I didn't know this information. I don't believe in a heaven. I don't believe in a hell. I don't necessarily believe in an afterlife. So I, I don't want you to necessarily belay, belay a trust, but can you give an example of the nature of the information? Um, okay. Well, I could, the way he was standing, I kind of passed on and told her, um, the information he was from England, um, the information he said that he and um, goodness, I'm trying to remember this right off the top of my head. Well, um, in a lot of these situations, it seems to be like that her was weird. In a lot of these yeah. situations, it seems to be that sometimes it's the sort of information that's, you know, uh, trivial. Oh, he loves you yeah. and cares about you. It's never here's where I buried the money. No, that, that, it that, wasn't anything like that. It was a yeah. lot like what you're saying. So is that my brain doing that? <laughs> You know, is that my brain making these logical guesses and having my imagination running wild, or...? I, I, I don't know it's what the explanation like is. Brain. I don't know. Is the, question, <laughs> is, is the question, what's more likely? Is the yeah. question, what is more likely? Um, yeah. That it's a deity and there's spirit world and an afterlife and all these other things, or that it's some internal thought process or brain chemistry or something else. So I'm going to say a couple things, and uh, I will trust you, Sally, to not take any of this remotely the wrong way. No, um, not at all, and that's why I'm calling so to get another, someone else's opinion. Yeah. Someone who's more skeptical than I am. I, I have no idea what the actual explanation is, but I don't think mm -hmm. you, you do either, and I don't think anybody no. can until they actually investigate it. It, it, this is the sort of mm -hmm. thing where people convince themselves that they have a certain ability because they r remember weird incidents and remember the hits and forget all the other times that they were wrong. And so this is why the James Randi Educational Foundation for years had the million dollar prize to t test claims like this and, and nobody ever passed it. Um, but the thing yeah. is, it may be the case that there is actually something going wrong in your brain. Um, yep. Audio, visual hallucinations uh, can be symptoms of something. Yep. It may be worth, I, I would say that if it was happening certainly frequently, it would be worth checking out. But at the end of the day, um, I can understand from your perspective how this can be incredibly compelling and convincing. I've never had this experience. If I was to, to look at someone and see a flash and then hear information, I, I think I would have to go, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is my brain doing it. I don't know if I'm getting communications from the other side. So I would have to develop so, some of sort of test. It, and I would, that, I would... Is that some part of my brain that we don't know about yet and that just has good intuition or, you know, I mean, I have an active imagination, perhaps it's that, you know, something like it, that. I'm, it, I'm assuming there's got to be some sort of logical explanation. Well, it, it could be. I mean, the, the, the big issue is to say, I don't know, this needs to be investigated further, and it may be worthwhile mm -hmm. talking to a medical professional or, you know, a psychologist or somebody that would look at these sorts of things and say, here are a number of avenues that we can begin with to try to rule mm -hmm. out certain things. But at the end of the day, even as weird as it is, I think the only conclusion that you can draw now is I've experienced something and I don't know what it is. Yep. Because because reaching any any firmer conclusion would be just as un, unwarranted as as anybody else trying to say, oh well, because I don't have any other explanation, therefore God or therefore ghosts or whatever. Um, mm hmm So yeah, I, I would I keep tabs on it. See see how often it's happening. Take notes on what's happening. Get 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 a diary of when these sorts of experiences are happening with as much specifics as you can. And then talk yeah. to somebody. Yeah, it hasn't happened many times. It's only maybe about six times in my whole life. Um, it doesn't seem to be something I have control over or know how to do or I don't charge people or, you know, I think a lot of there's a lot of charlatans out there. I don't even know if I can do, you know. Um, yeah. If I you... think the, my biggest problem is, my biggest worry, I guess, is what if it is, a, so like, say your loved one, Matt, maybe your grandfather, I've heard you talk about your grandfather before. Mm -hmm. and he, I'm sitting with you and he has a message for you. Morally, is it, even if I'm wrong, is it morally right for me to give you that information in case it is him wanting to give you a message? 
I would argue that the I would argue that the only moral issue is that if you portrayed it as if there was good reason to think that it was coming from my grandfather, if you just came to me and said, yeah. I don't understand this, I don't know what's going on, and it could be my brain making things up for all I know, but I get the impression that yeah. your grandfather wants to relay this information, I think you're being mm -hmm. honest there. Uh, and I don't. Yeah. That's what I tend to I wouldn't do be upset. Them. And I would also I say, know. you know, don't unnecessarily bear a burden that you don't have to carry. I mean, if if you suspect there may be a number of different things going on, but your default is, yeah. I if I don't tell him, I'm being duplicitous or I'm doing, I'm making a a, a poor choice. I mean, that's a, a burden. I don't think you should. You should, yeah. should, you should uh, allow yourself to skate on that in and not tell this person because you feel like a coward or duplicitous for not telling them. You can just shake that one right off and just tell them if you feel like being honest with them about it. Yeah, one of the things is, is what is the content? Because if the message is, here's where I buried the will and all the money. Um, <laughs> yep. My phone number is. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the positives greatly outweigh the negatives there. If the message is, mm -hmm. I'm burning in hell and I don't want you to, or you're oh, about God. to make a mistake by marrying the wrong person. Uh, all of these things, there, I would think that there would be a requirement to be very, very confident that there was some truth to the message before it was relayed. So the content of the message, I think, comes into play. Don't beat yourself up. I, I, I feel a burden on you. I mean, it's not like if I was in the church, I'd say in my spirit, I sense that there's a burden on your shoulders. I feel a check in my spirit about you and I'll pray. But that's not how I mean that. I just mean listening to the tone of your voice and the language that you're using. I sense that you, you're kind of burdened by how much of this you should uh, do. I am a little bit. And I think because, honestly, you're going to have to allow yourself to, to just kind of breathe this one out. And, and you can then decide on your own terms for your own reasons, how much you share or don't share. I, yep. Yeah, well, I think I found my way of doing it is say, look, I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I yeah. don't know what I'm doing. This has come to me. I'm going to give you the information just in case, and you can choose to believe it or not. Take it with a grain of salt. And we'll then, navigate this road together. Yeah. I buy that. Yeah, and I just say, you know, I just feel like in case it is true and it is your loved one wanting to tell you something, mm -hmm. then I've done the right thing. I feel like I've done the right thing then. Um, and if it's not, well... I don't know. Don't, know? I would not, don't front load agency into it because you're afraid of being wrong. Just be honest. I don't know what this is. I don't know what it means, but here's kind of what happened. And I thought I would share it with you. And I think that's an honest approach. And I, I, I think if you, it, it becomes clear if somebody's doing something for the right reasons and you're considering the content and what, what likely effect that's going to have on somebody, um, that you're not trying to exploit them. You're not, tr you're not trying to claim things that you don't have. Um, it's just, you know, exercise a little bit of caution and quite frankly if I was in your position I think I would be far more inclined to keep all of the information to myself rather than to say any of it but that's more about me and what I think and what I'm comfortable the with potential for perhaps unnecessarily complicating I would need a good reason I would need good reasons to think that I was actually receiving messages from someone and that the messages were important before I could ever share them I, I, could, I don't think I could do it from the standpoint of I don't know what this is but with regard to the moral question, I only think that, I, I think that it's only likely to be considered immoral um, if you're doing harm, if you're uh, misrepresenting the facts, if you're trying to lay claim to things that, you know, you can't justify. If it's just, you know, in the yeah. I don't know, whatever, uh, you're probably okay. You know, a few people said, oh, why don't you do this and, you know, charge people if you've got this gift? And I'm like, I'm not even sure what it is. <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't morally take money off something, you know, just in case, as I said, I've given up just about everything else, but in case, you know, like your grandfather, Matt, wanted to give you something and I don't give it to you, then I feel like that if he's gone to all that effort to give you a message and I haven't passed it on, then... Although if my grandfather wants to give me something, I'd rather he contact me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I just, I kind of feel like I'm stuck in the middle trying to make this moral decision of has, whether or not I pass it on. He has or power to I contact the living. He can contact the, the interested party directly. Kind of like yeah, God. That's a really good point. Kind of like God, yeah. always speaking through preachers and everything else. If a Damascus Road experience is good enough for Saul, then we should all get one. And if it's not, and if it's yeah. not sufficient evidence, then they can piss off with the claims and saying, oh, look, there was a miracle or somebody heard from God. I have no reason to believe that anybody's heard from God until I hear from that son of a bitch myself. <laughs> and any God that isn't worth yeah. 
five minutes. Of, I'm not, if I'm not worth five minutes of God's time, then he's worth none of mine. You know what? He's getting called all kinds no. of names today. It grieves my yeah. spirit. It grieves that my asshole. spirit. Hey, Sally, before we let you go, say say Melbourne yeah. for me. Mel- Melbourne. <laughs> say I got a friend in Utah, and he go, I taught him how to say Melbourne. Melbourne. Yep. Melbourne. No, Melbourne. Mel- I, no. I'm from Melbourne. Oklahoma, and I struggle with this because the R is right there, and I learned it wrong to begin with. M- Melbourne. No. Melbourne. Melbourne, yes. It's a soft. A soft but it only works Melbourne. with the Australian accent. It's M E L B I N. Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah. Well, yeah, so you can't, we kind of drop the R. When I need Melbourne. to say it, I'm going to call you and you can actually say it for me because I'm going <laughs> to redneck the hell out of that <laughs> and, one. Um, so. Can I ask a you favor, favor, guys? My two sure. kids are watching this. Their names are Xander and Hudson, and they both love you as well. Um, could you say hello to Xander and Hudson for me? Xander and Hudson. Hello, Xander and Hudson. Thanks for watching. It's really me, and it's really him, uh, and we're happy that you're watching. <laughs> Xander and Hudson, I want you to know how much fun I'm having on the show today, and uh, I was hoping that... Uh, no, I don't know if you can even read that. It says, help me. I just thought it was a funny joke. Xander oh, and Hudson, you, guys. You, made me cheery. you are greatly appreciated. Make every day a discovery. Stay curious. Ask a ton of questions. Love and... Live your life on your terms and all our best. You can tell which one of us is actually a parent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for helping me out. It's something that I Thanks, you know, really struggled with. And I've let go of every other bit of faith, but this is just, I'm just struggling to know what to do with it. And it, having, you know, you guys reinforce, I guess, what I already knew. You know what? It's human to struggle. Well, it's and it's, helpful. it's natural. And I think you let it go, breathe it out. And allow yourself permission to to not you know do what you're not comfortable with. I think you're going to be fine. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much, and it was such an honor speaking to you both. Thank, Thank you. you for what you do. There Cheers. Was, uh, Thanks so much. Uh, she was talking about uh, you know getting a message or um, uh, you know knowing whether or not it's it's truth or it's fact. And I hear a version of this in the church whenever they say that well this serendipitous event happened and therefore there's agency or it was God. And I'm reminded it's, uh, it's, a, it's an example of when the church comes and they tell you that uh, you know, Bob and Sue have a child who was cured of cancer, praise Jesus, and you'll hear that during the, the announcements. And um, so-and-so got a check in the mail right after they lost their job. It was an inheritance, praise Jesus. And, um, you know, how often are we counting the hits and ignoring the misses? If you drive by a casino, they never put the losers on the marquee. They don't say, John Doe lost $30,000 last year at Casino X. They only put up the winners. And I think we as pattern seekers, we're always looking for the winners, the ones that make sense, the ones that sort of affirm us in the positive, the one that, that sounds like it fit a larger narrative. And that doesn't make these claims true. It just makes us pattern seekers. 7,000 children died this month with no special healing from God. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so-and-so did die of cancer and whatever. I, you, you, he's gone home to be with Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So He's in a better place. It's a win-win scenario. I'm going to cure you. Oh, praise Jesus. I'm going to bring you to heaven. Praise Jesus. You ever notice it's very rare that you hear about anybody who's like, they're burning in hell right now. That just doesn't get mentioned <laughs> at funerals. I, It'll I, be I, mentioned I, at our funerals. I've heard but, it's happened. Like somebody oh, no. sent me a message. Have you heard the story? Like somebody it's at somebody's funeral actually said, you know, so and so didn't know the Lord and he's now in hell. And they actually turned the funeral into an altar call, which I think it it stirs something primal in me when I hear these stories of people's last wishes being co opted by the religious. I'm not a violent person at all. I, I'm I'm averse to violence. If I'm at a funeral of an atheist and some dipshit says they're burning in hell and they try to do an altar call, my ass is going up to the (laughs) altar and you will not like what happens when I get there. Because I don't care whose family it is, you and I are going to have words. The the disgusting to just crap all over people's grief in order to turn it into an affirmation about your personal beliefs. I don't care how important it is. I care whether or not you can prove it. And after 14 years, after a thousand episodes of this show, asking people to tell us what they believe and why, exactly how many people have shown up and presented evidence? How many of them, when asked for evidence, have spent five minutes not understanding what evidence is and just giving us another story or another claim? Oh, all of them. (laughs) There's been no presentation evidence. I want to try and get to one more call before we shut this down. Before you start that, um, isn't there a button here that says you're done? 
because I think I, that's one of those things. But like, is there a you're done button when you do that? This company spells you're done, drop, <laughs> okay. D-R-O-P. I was waiting. 